very good afternoon to all of you. A big and hearty welcome to all our distinguished guests, elected officials, members of the diplomatic corps, friends and supporters. I know I have people here from Panama, from Barbados, from Jamaica. Welcome to our little Trini get together. Yay! A warm and sunny Trinbago welcome to everybody. Yes. And if we were in Trinidad, we would say it's a great day for cricket. Yes. <laughs> no cricket in the Bronx though. I am Hazra Ali. I'm a small business owner and a community leader in the New York area. I do most of my work in Brooklyn and Manhattan, and this is my first little foray into the Bronx. Yes. So I am indeed honored and privileged to be here today with you people and for my first little step into the Bronx to be doing something with my dear Vanessa Gibson, our leader today. Yes. Uh, this is the, probably one of the first post-pandemic times that we're coming together to celebrate and we're celebrating Trinidad's 60th anniversary of independence. I'm so pleased to be a part of celebrating something for my home country, sweet, sweet TNT. So without moving on further, we need, we need to get our anthems out of the way so that we can now start the party. So I'm going to call on Ricardo Jerome, who will move us with first the anthem of Trinidad and Tobago. Oh, the love of with boundless faith in our destiny, we solemnly to be Side by side we stand, I am the beautiful sea, we And once again, I'm going to call on Ricardo to take us to the and national anthem. I don't have to say the United States because we're here already. So just the anthem. <laughs> Our adopted country, absolutely. She's here. She's here. Tell her okay. Actually, a little change in things. We have um, Diana Royo who's going to do the anthem. So, <laughs> welcome, Diane. Hey, Diana, you rock, girl. Oh, say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming? Whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets rattled, the bombs burst in. Gave proof to the night that a flag was still there. Oh, say, does that star spangled and merry and wave or the land? Hooray! 
Thank you. My God, what a voice. That was certainly worth waiting on. Let's hear it for Ms. Arroyo. Now, I'm going to just go through and tell you a little bit about Trinidad and Tobago. I know our Trinidadians here and Tobagonians know this history already, but we do have some um, non-Trinidadian and perhaps non-Caribbean members here who would like to hear a little bit about our country. So I will first begin by saying Trinidad and Tobago was first um, visited by Christopher Columbus on his third voyage. He found both countries at the same time in 1498. And since then, we were administered under the Spanish until 1797, when the British bumped them out and took it away without a fight. They, they just gave it up. And the reason they gave it up is because they really didn't have a population large enough to defend Trinidad and Tobago from the, um, from the British that was now coming on the sea. And those of you that are Trinidadians would be familiar with the name um, Chacon. We have a street named Chacon. Well, he was the, the Spanish governor. And the, the, the uh, British one was called Abercrombie. And Abercrombie is the one who pushed Chacon out. So we became now a British colony. But during the time of the Spanish, we had a period where the population was so very low. Low because Trinidad did not have gold. And the Spanish came to the West to look for El Dorado, as we all know. So not having gold, we had a very small population between the Amerindian, Caribs and Arawaks, and a very small number of Spanish. So they then allowed anybody who is Roman Catholic to go to Trinidad and Tobago. Well, it wasn't Tobago yet, it was all Trinidad. So they were giving them something like 36,000 um, 36, of their uh, uh, acres of land. Any Roman Catholic could go to Trinidad. And who took up that offer were the French people because they, um, they were having their revolution and a lot of them, slavery was now being abolished. So there was a lot of discussion around that. So what happened is a lot of French people went to Trinidad. So now you have the British push the Spanish out. So you have a British country with French speaking people, landowners and colonists and um, Spanish laws because it was a Spanish colony. So it was a good Kalaloo. We started with Kalaloo very early in our culture. I guess that's why our most favorite food is still called Kalaloo. So we had French planters and their, and their, um, their, their, free, their, their slaves, and then we had colored mulattoes, colored people and mulattoes, colored owned slaves under the French. And so they went to, so we have something called French Creole in Trinidad. Their ancestors would have been people who owned slaves as well. So we didn't, for some reason, have a lot of slaves. We had about 17,000 slaves, while Jamaica, which is much larger than us, had about half a million slaves. So um, we had, because of people coming from all these different islands, and then when the British took it, we got people from Ireland and Germany and Italy. We have a very mixed um, type of ethnicity in Trinidad. So our people look a little bit different from the rest of the Caribbean. I want to say we're more beautiful. Don't you agree? <laughs> Miss Gibson is half Trinidad. Don't you agree? You're at her house. <laughs> anyway, so the French planters were there, and now people coming in from Grenada and Guadeloupe and Martinique to populate Trinidad. So right now, there's a lot of words in our dialect in Trinidad. We, we have a kind of a dialect. It's not a real dialect, like the way St. Lucia and Haiti has. But there are a lot of French words in it, and that's because of those planters. Our carnival was originated by those, the slaves copying the French people. And so a lot of the words that describes the carnival, Dimash Gras, and, and all the words, the Grand Dame and the Grand Lorraine and, and, and uh, uh, Juve, all those words came out of language that was spoken in our country that was a British colony by that time. So moving along from that old history, we eventually became British and um, Tobago and Trinidad became united. Tobago, on the other hand, got um, picked up by the Dutch. And if you could remember your old, your old geography, there's a line, the latitude that run across just below Venezuela. And it starts by Suriname, Tobago, um, Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire. 
Well, we kicked the Dutch out and they got a little piece of Suriname, but they continued along and they got those ABC countries, Aruba, Curacao, and Bonaire. They remained ruled under the Dutch. We took Tobago away from them. And so Tobago and Trinidad became unified as one country. Two island, twin island. So moving along under the British, when rum was king, rum was the oil at the time, they were planting sugar cane. And then we get up to now, I'm doing a fast forward, 1838, when slavery is abolished, they needed workers. So what they did, they went to India and brought 1,500 um, indentured servants, and then they continued until 1818 to bring Indians over as indentured servants. And one of the things they did is, in exchange for the passage back, is they gave them land. So we have French people getting land under the Spanish, so in Trinidad, if you know, a lot of the, the French Creoles own the land because of that first cedula. And then you now have some Indians owning the land because of that exchange for the passage back to India. So what that left Trinidad with is a biracial country. Today we have a country that is 1.5 million people. Uh, we have 35% no, 36% Indians, 35% Black, but that, um, that number changed because I'm quoting statistics of 2005. I'm a little bit behind. Uh, but it may have changed, especially now since trouble is happening in Venezuela and we now have a, a little Spanish um, influence coming over. But I forgot to mention how Venezuela played a role. When the, when the sugar cane started to fall, they started to plant cocoa, as the young American trainees will say, cacao. No, we say cocoa. Right? So... When they started to plant cocoa, the people who knew how to plant cocoa came from Venezuela. And till today, there's a class of people we call coco payol. Some of you may have heard the word coco payol. The coco payol were the Spanish coming out of Venezuela to work those estates. And what they have given to us, everybody who passed through Trinidad gave us a little bit in our cuisine and our, every other part of our culture. What the Venezuelan gave us is something called parang, which we play every Christmas time. And it's all sung in Spanish, but because we don't have the language, they, they make up foolish words and just give the rhythm to it. And that's parang. Because if, if a Spanish person listens to it, it really doesn't mean anything. It's just rhythm. So, so now we start where they start to plant cocoa. And I see, I'm, the reason I'm talking about the cocoa, because I see we have some young people doing cocoa. Now, Trinidad cocoa became like one of the tops cocoa in the world. And um, I think eventually it just died off. And about 100 years ago, they found oil in Trinidad. And I think that perhaps killed off some of the agriculture. Um, so cocoa died out. Sugar cane started dying out. Well, rum is still number one out there. Um, and Trinidad actually distills rum for a lot of companies. Like the way Bacardi distills for other companies, Trinidad and Vestura distills for like 10 Cane, which is a French company distilled by Bacardi, by um, Angostura in Trinidad and Tobago. So um, I think I covered most of it, but now we're up to where we are today. Being a biracial country with like how America is Republican, Democrat, we have a two-party system that work much the same way. The two of them fight and the people get along. So, um, so that's where we are. Um, we were an oil wealthy country. We still have things like um, methanol and, and fertilizer. So we're number one in the world for some other types of industrial product. Very industrialized. And I know people think we are third world because we are in the Caribbean. Third world is nothing to do with geographic location. Third world is about um, industrialization, GDP, education of the population. And with all those numbers, Trinidad stops. Let's hear it for Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> So when you have Trinidadians come into America to be employed, I always hear from people what a great employee they are because our British education system still, even at our lower grade, is probably equivalent to some college level education here. So it's a, a very strong in education. All right, so that, I think we're good with what, where I am now. Now, moving into the more modern age, when the British were there with us, what they did, they, they banned music. And so what our people decide to do, they decided they're going to beat the empty oil drums. So it, during the oil, the time of the discovery of oil, 
they would store the oil in these uh, metal drums. And you may have seen Ricardo with his steel drum there that he has cut almost a quarter. That's a, is that a tenor pan? That's a tenor pan. But if you leave the whole length of the pan, that's a base. And it goes on depending on this, the, the amount of width that you leave on the pan. It gives a different um, part of the scale. So from that, the, the noise that used to come from the pan to where we are today, the pan is the, the designated the only instrument um, invented in the 21st century and invented in Trinidad and Tobago. So that is our national instrument. Let's hear it for the pan. Let's get it some notes. Ricardo, let's hear some notes. Very good. So with, with all the history I've sent to you, I don't know if you want to ask me any questions. I'm not really a Trinidad and Tobago encyclopedia. I'm just a Trini. <laughs> How do you greet one another? Well, Hug, kiss. Well, well, it depends. It, it depends on, on who the person is. But um, yeah, we are not like the Spanish. They give two kisses on the cheek and all that. No, no, no. But, but we're very, very warm people. Very hospitable, very warm. And with all the different countries that influence our country, you can see why our cuisine is so different. Uh, we have a little influence. Of, when the Spanish was there, by the way, Portugal and Spanish was still one country. And so some of our food is Portuguese. We have a, a strong um, lentils and stews that's from the Portuguese. In fact, some of our best breads were from the Portuguese. They don't call it Portuguese anymore. They used to call it a six cent loaf. Even when they sell it for 25 cents, they would still call it a six cent loaf. But those were the poor. And it, I think in America, you could go to the grocery and see these loose bread. They're Portuguese bread, very excellent bread. So we have food from the, 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 the Indian community, Afro food. I mean, you, you, know, you could tell African food when you eat Trinidad food and the curries. And of course, a little bit of, a little bit of the Spanish because we have a repa and paella there too. So we have an influence from all the peoples that pass through our country. And now a new crop, Chinese. We have a lot of Chinese uh, influence as well because during the period of indentorship, they did bring some Chinese, but it didn't work out. They couldn't work in the hot sun and they brought only men. And I think it just didn't work out. So they continued um, bringing, on, bringing on the Indian um, indentorship. Anyway, I don't want to drag this program on too long, so I'm going to invite um, Mary. I know we're moving off of the schedule a little bit, but I think I just want to put all the culture together so that the, the music will just keep going. Where are we? Where are we now? We should be. We should be having the steel drum. Jerome, are you ready? Okay, so you are doing a solo number, and I think you told me you were going to do one of David Rudder's um, piece. But here you go. And the steel pan, as I told you, invented in Trinidad and Tobago. The, the only instrument discovered in the 20th century. Yes. You ready? Okay, so, so am I doing Mary? Okay, so I'm introducing Mary Tang Yu. She's a consul at the Consulate General of Trinidad and Tobago. Uh, Mary, Mary works at the Trinidad and Tobago Consulate that has responsibility for New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Massachusetts, Maine, and Vermont, and New Hampshire. Oh my God, we are so lucky to have her here, and, and not in one of those other states. So I'm going to pass you on to Mary. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ms. Hazra Ali, to the Bar President. Ms. Vanessa Gibson and the Deputy Bar President, um, Ms. Jeanette A. Pagero, if I got the pronunciation correct, yes. members of the Trinidad Tobago and wider Caribbean diaspora, staff of the Consulate General. I am joined by Mr. Marlon Chuyang, our Consul Security, um, our um, lovely staff, loyal staff, Mr. Shobabalal and Ms. Gail Lowe Roberts. Um, specially invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of the Honorable J. Andre Laveau, Consul General of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, I have greetings on this momentous occasion of the celebration of the 60th anniversary of independence of our great nation. Our... <laughs> <Nice. laughs> 
Our highly talented Trinbagonian diaspora have and continue to play a vital role in respect of the development of our country through remittances, promoting trade and investment, transfer of knowledge, and simply by encouraging their friends and family to visit our islands and enjoy our unique festivals and gastronomy. Our relationship with our diaspora is further strengthened by the outpouring and love and generosity as many of you conduct philanthropic, philanthropic activities to provide our nationals with support when needed. The Consul General is heartened by the Bronx Bower President's hosting of this flag racing ceremony as it serves as a positive step in recognizing the contributions made by our diaspora in the Bronx jurisdiction and brings to bear the realization of just how blessed we are as a people to be able to commemorate this Diamond Jubilee milestone right here in your country of destination, United States of America. Might I add, we are tremendously proud of the Bronx Power President for honoring your diverse Caribbean community with the recent flag raising of Jamaica who also turned 60. And of course, I was very happy to hear that Bounce Power President does have Trini ties through her father. <laughs> the Consulate General acknowledges that having come from the throes of a pandemic, we must reflect on ways to turn adversity into a shared purpose. Indeed, we are thankful and thriving, and we must always continue to celebrate our triumphs, even despite challenges. As together we achieve, together we aspire. And in this vein, we are Together 60. <laughs> On behalf of the Consulate General of Trinidad and Tobago, we want to say thank you. Continue to nourish, sustain, and uplift each other as Trinbegonian and by extension Caribbean people, and continue to uplift the Twin Island Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Happy 60th Independence, and may God bless our nation. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. So I think we're going to have some culture now. So let's do the dance. Let's do, yes. So we're going to move away from the musical and take you now to a little bit of dance from Trinidad and Tobago. And here we have uh, Abba Roy from the Sri Dance Center. Um, she has performed all over the world, Trinidad and Tobago, uh, Guyana, Canada, and many European countries. She also runs a program called the Shrijan, Shrijan Dance Center that does storytelling, yoga, and dance workshop. She's part of New York City Board of Education Projects Arts, where she teaches the students, the parents, and the teachers, which is what the Projects Arts is about. So take it away, Jerome. Can you start her music? You. you want to say something? Namaste. This is the way. When Indians came, as Hazra uh, was mentioning, the 36% of the population, we greet like this. And this particular number is uh, a romantic number. It's a, yeah, a romantic number and a festival. You can see this means when I will do, this means a veil, this means throwing the colors, this means going away, and this means coming together. This is, and that what we are supposed to do, all coming together, you being everyone. Thank you. Yeah, we dance uh, barefoot, that is why. And this is for Ben by the Is it hot? Oh, it's the one from Dupanta Farm. Okay, got it. Thank you. 
Thank you so much, Abba. That was so lovely. Could we get another hand up, round of applause for Abba? And I know very much with the Indian dance, the dance and the movements actually is a language. So um, thank you very much for coming out to the Bronx. Abba is from Queens. Okay, so without much further ado, the, mo the woman of the moment, I'm going to invite our Bronx Borough President, Ms. Vanessa L. Gibson, who will bring remarks. And being a Trini, I expect some little Trini words. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Happy Independence Day, TNT, Trinidad and Tobago. Make some noise. I am so grateful to welcome you all here to Bronx Borough Hall 
What an honor to serve as the Bronx Borough President, as the first ever female and African American to serve in this role. I am my father's child. I am my mother's child. I am my ancestors' wildest dreams. And I am so grateful to be here with all of you. For the first time in the history of the great county of the Bronx, we are doing the official flag raising of Trinidad and Tobago, recognizing the 60th anniversary of the independence of TNT. And to my fellow Trinis, to my fellow Caribbean Americans, West Indians, we are so proud of the incredible contributions and progress that is made here in the Bronx and beyond. I often say, you know, a majority of the Caribbean Americans and the West Indians live in Brooklyn and in Queens, but we got some in the Bronx too, right? Right? So last week, we also made history in recognizing the 60th uh, anniversary of the independence of Jamaica. So I want to say love to my brothers and sisters from the island of Jamaica on your independence. And on today, we are recognizing the independence of Trinidad and Tobago. And it is so great that all of you are here, my colleagues in government, family, friends, neighbors, the office of the Bronx Borough President. Can we give it up for my staff? We are just so grateful to serve all of you here in the Bronx. I want to say thank you to my sister, Diana Roya, for always gracing us with the national anthem, the beautiful voice that God has blessed her with. To my good friend, my Trini brother, Ricardo Jerome, Trini Steel Drums, thank you so much. It's so grateful to have you here. Of course, we have to recognize our mistress of ceremonies, fellow Trinidadian, give it up for Hazra Ali. Yes. Thank you for the history of Trinidad, and thank you for your leadership and your commitment and what you do each and every day. And I want to take this moment to say thank you on behalf of Bronx Borough Hall. Make sure you tell everybody you got this from the Bronx, okay? We want to present this to you for all of your great contributions. Thank you for joining us today, and thank you for what you do on behalf of the Bronx and all New Yorkers. Yeah. This is a surprise. I didn't know I was getting a proclamation. Thank you. 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 Uh, of course, our representatives of the General Consul's Office of Trinidad and Tobago. Can we give it up for Mary Tang Yu? Thank you so much for representing. And on tomorrow, we're going to do the official flag raising at the uh, Consul's Office. So I'm excited about that because we're going to just continue with the Trini culture. We're just going to continue with recognizing um, the heritage of Trinidad. And of course, I want to thank Miss Abba Roy. Thank you so much for the wonderful traditional dance. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So excited. And, and really, all of you, uh, this is an honor because I realize it's never happened before. And there are so many of you that have played a major role in the Bronx. And often is the case where we in the Bronx are last in everything good, and we are first in everything that is bad. And every day we strive to change the direction of this borough, to change the environment and the atmosphere, and to create the spirit of the Bronx in a renewed way, to work with our educators, our first responders, all of our leaders, elected officials, our business owners and entrepreneurs, and say, we are better than what you sometimes hear about. We are better than the violence. We are beyond that. We are about love and fellowship and faith and culture and diversity and heritage and coming together as different people from different places. But guess what? All the things that bind us together, education and housing and good schools and public safety and economic development and building up our families and uplifting our young people, making sure that our youth can look at us and see themselves. 
While I am the first, I will not be the last because we have to cultivate the next generation of leaders, the next borough presidents, the next leaders of our great county. And so I do this work every single day on your behalf and I thank you for the incredible honor. I often say I wake up every day on purpose with a purpose because I realize that my God, my God has given me this incredible opportunity to serve for such a time as this. And I wanna recognize my partner at Borough Hall. When we took office in January, our first week, we knew we had to elevate another woman of color that shared our values, that shared our principles, shared our vision, that also reflected the diversity of this great county. And so as I am a history maker, so is she as the first Latina, the first Dominicana, because we wanna recognize our brothers and sisters from the Dominican Republic and, and all of the work that we are doing. And so ladies and gentlemen, I wanna help, help me welcome my partner, our Deputy Borough President, Janet Figueroa. Thank you so much, Janet, for all of your work. My chief of staff is also here. I want to recognize Justin Cortez. Thank you, thank you, Justin, and the entire office, all of the staff who are here uh, that do tremendous work every, every single day. Um, in addition to just saying thank you to all of you, I want to thank certainly many of our leaders in this community. I want to recognize an incredible organization called Youth Leaders on the Move. I was one of their first honorees many moons ago. And I want to say thank you to Miss Patricia Williams, fellow Trini. We got to recognize Patricia Williams. We want to say thank you, Patricia. And the Deputy Borough President and I want to present this to you to say thank you. Thank you, sister. Thank you, Patricia, for all your work. Let's show her some love. Thank you for helping us to make today's event such a success. Patricia Williams, y'all. TNT, y'all. Trinidad and Tobago. Thank you. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, 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 she said that's the money shot. I got you. Okay. This wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I want to say thank you to Robert of Ferosas for sponsoring our, thank you so much for sponsoring our Falori. Thank you to Trinity Life. Thank you. Give them a round of applause for the alu pie yeah. and the doubles and the pelu. Sorry, my hair is all over the place. Thank you to Sol Kakoa for the amazing chocolate. Three brothers here in the Bronx. Let's shout them out. Nicholas Maloney, Daniel Dominic. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I also want to recognize my uh, Office of Special Events, Cecilia Hernandez. Thank you, Cecilia, for all of your great work. She need a raise. Oh. Ah. Do I hear that? She says she need a raise. <laughs> Okay. Oh, goodness. I want to also, hold on, hold on. I got this. If I could see. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so you heard all the history and you heard about Carnival in Trinidad. So I also want to say there were some famous people that are from Trinidad that I knew about and then some I didn't know about. Did you guys know Nicki Minaj was born in Trinidad? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Nicki Minaj was born in Trinidad. She was born in St. James. Uh, what about actress Nia Long? Did anyone know she's Trini as well? And then what about actor Alfonso Ribeiro? 
Carlton Banks from Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and he's from the Bronx too. So those are like some notables. I was like, wow, that's really like a, a big deal here. That's really like like so cool. Okay, so thank you, thank you. So I also just want to say, um, in addition to all the great foods and the culture and the heritage, you know, I learned everything about Trinidad from my dad. My dad was born November. 21st, 1946, in Port of Spain, Trinidad. And he and my grandmother, his mother, uh, Dulcy Phillips, decided to come to the States. And they migrated to Brooklyn, <laughs> to Flatbush. Uh, and my dad worked for 30 years at St. Luke's Roosevelt Hospital. He was a proud member of 1199 SEIU. Um, in the maintenance and security department. And I lost him a few years ago, but I think so much about everything that my dad taught me. He was the number one person in my life. Uh, my dad was like straight Trini to the bone. He had a million and one Kango hats. He had a permanent gold cap. He had everything that Trini's always are known for. His name was Julian Tull, but everybody called him Potsy. That was his name, Poxy. You know, yeah, he, you know, nobody called him Junior. No one even knew his real name. They just knew him as Poxy. And I love my, love my dad. My dad was my first love in my life. And then when he passed away a few years ago, my grandmother moved from Brooklyn back to Trinidad, uh, where she stayed for a couple of years. And Miss Patricia knows because she helped me because during the pandemic is when I actually lost my grandma at the tender age of 96. To God be the glory. She lived a long life, and I still have family, my cousins that all live on the island, as well as in St. Thomas and in St. Kitts. I have a lot of family there, and I think about, you know, my family and what they instilled in me and the values, and I love all of the things about Trinidad, from the food to the culture to carnival to everything uh, that I was taught as a child. So I just want to honor my dad and honor my grandma and honor so many that we've lost uh, because I know that my dad would truly be proud. He'd be right here with the Kango on. Yes, he would. What is his gold tooth? Yes, he would. Uh, my poxy, my poxy. Um, But ultimately, as, as I close just my remarks and we do the official flag raising, I just want to say thank you because it is not often the case where we recognize the growing Caribbean American community that is represented here in the Bronx. This county is known as predominantly Latino residents, and we are so grateful to have a growing Latino community from the Dominican Republic, from Puerto Rico, from Ecuador, from Mexico, uh, from Honduras, from Belize, uh, from Costa Rica, from so many different places. But this was an opportunity for us as the ball president, as the deputy, and my staff and I, we wanted to say we have to recognize the 60th anniversary because you don't often recognize 60 years of the independence of Trinidad and Tobago. And so that's what today is really all about. Um, on Monday, I will be in Brooklyn at the West Indian American Day Parade. Yes, I will. Right, right with my people at Wiata. West Indian American Day Carnival Association. I go to the parade every single year and rep my island and rep the Bronx because we got to make sure the Bronx is represented. And we will be there just to celebrate um, at Juve on Sunday and all the great things because that's what it's about. It's about recognizing the past, celebrating the present, and looking to the future. We have been a staple in this country. We have helped to build this country to what it is today. And we have to do our part to recognize all of our first responders, the essential workers, our small business owners, all of our entrepreneurs that have done so much to pave the way for the next generation of leaders. So to everyone, I say thank you to our office, to my team. Thank you to everyone that's been a part of this program. We look forward to working with you. Happy Independence Day, Trinidad. Okay, I have another proclamation. I love this. So as the Bronx Borough President, I get to proclaim days. And we know on August 31st of 1962, the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago gained its independence and it became a republic in 1976. The twin island country saw periods of occupation by the crowns of Spain, the Netherlands, and Great Britain long before its independence. Trinidad and Tobago was first colonized by the Spanish and then under English rule until the time of independence in 1962. Whereas the office of the Bronx Borough President on this day recognizes the contributions of the many Trinidadian 
families, residents, and communities in the Bronx and the city of New York, and we pay tribute to the cultural heritage of Trinidadians at home and abroad. This celebration affirms the independence, the culture, the identity, the self-esteem of its people. We honor the rich history of Trinidadians and the journey that many of them have been on to autonomy and independence. Now, therefore, be it I, Vanessa L. Gibson, president of the borough of El Bronx, on behalf of 1.4 million residents who call the Bronx home, do proclaim August 31st, 2022, as Trinidad and Tobago's 60th anniversary of independence. Thank you, and I'd like to present it to the general consul, the consulate, and the team, and I'll be with you tomorrow, too. Oh, great, so we can hold on this tomorrow, so I can present it as well, along with the mayor, right? <laughs> Before we actually do the official uh, flag raising, I want to turn it back over to our MC as we do our closing remarks. But once again, to everyone, to the Office of the Bronx Borough President, to Ms. Patricia, Patricia Williams, to our General Consulate, to all the businesses and partners. Shout out to BronxNet. Thank you, Michael Matznabi. And to each and every one of you, thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to many more celebrations like this. Stay tuned, guys, because also in the Bronx, we have never had a Caribbean parade. It's coming. It's coming. We can do whatever we want. But the good thing is, is that we are creating history for others to follow. We're setting our footprints for the next generation so they know they can proudly celebrate their heritage without fear of discrimination or racism or anything of that nature, but just coming together in love. So thank you, everyone. Happy Independence Day, TNT. Thank you, Madam Bar President. And I'm so proud thank to you. know that we have a tree in, uh, in a good yes. place to... I'm, I'm happy to hear that you're thinking of doing a parade. And I think um, something that I would recommend for the Bronx is that you encourage the steel pan groups. Um, you know, the, the, the mayor used to be the Bronx president in the yeah. Bronx. And being coming out of a, being a, pol a former police, he always used to say, two sticks in their hands. From Brooklyn. But what he always said, when they have two sticks in their hands, they cannot hold a gun. So it's a good way to keep them all in one place under supervision and kids that learn music always always um, surpass other kids in school. They, they seem to be very focused. So thank you again. Thank you everybody for coming. We have one major project still to do, which is the flag raising. But I would like for us, we have lost a lot of people during the pandemic. And we have not um, taken a minute to take a, a little moment of silence. The bar president just mentioned she lost grandma in Trinidad. So if you would join me for just a minute of silence for the ones we lost during the pandemic. Okay. So Jerome will play the anthem while we're going to hoist the flag. So, uh, so I will call the members of the consulate staff, the borough president staff who wants to be here, um, and whoever else wants to stand around the, the circle while she winds it up. 
You you're gonna wind it up, right? Who's uh, gonna who's gonna do it? It's a lot. The baby. <laughs> I I think so. You should just do it. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. So Ricardo, whenever you're ready, it, it it's not an easy place for her to stand and do it. I'll hold it. Let me just go. Okay. And let me just also thank our partners at DCAS for making sure that the flag was here and it's on time. Thank you, DCAS, D D Department of Citywide Administrative Services, as well as our court offices and the entire staff here at the Bronx County Building. They hold us down every single day. So I want to say thank you. We also had our district leader, Gene Edwards, here. I want to say thank you. Um, and so many of our friends, Yadira Gonzalez-Taylor, Miguelina Camilo, uh, Dr. Jacqueline Rosado. We have so many of our leaders that are here. So thank you, everyone. And while we're getting ready, I just want you all to know that we are celebrating at Bowling Green. It's open to With the Consul General, Mayor of New York, putting up again the flag. Tomorrow is the official anniversary of the independence, August 31st. 11 a.m. Okay, so Ricardo, 